man's claiming it By the end of this year I'll be raking it I already know what I want, I'm taking it Man better take what I'm saying and favourite it Said it with chest, I'm stating it, fuck who don't like it Man ain't rephrasing it When I weren't active it was all love But now I'm on stuff, man wanna start hating it My earliest memory probably maybe about two, three just remember them being like loads of instruments, like an early, early music computers in the house, like synthesizers, things like this, um, samplers. And my mum used to collect loads and loads of um, like vinyl, like reggae vinyl, soul, R&B, all of that. So like, and then as I got older, obviously I used to watch my dad, like he used to go on tour. I used to turn on the TV, sometimes see him playing on top of the pops. Um, and uh, yeah, my mum used to bring home like loads of, she ended up getting really into like garage and the speed garage. So she used to bring home loads of like different tape packs, CDs, all that kind of stuff. And then my family just, you know, like, there's like family parties, loads of music, sound system, culture. So yeah, that's my earliest memories, man. That gave me my base for like my musical taste. Do you get what I mean? Especially like me identifying more of my Jamaican side yeah. of my family and just like absorbing all the culture and the music that like my, my parents and my cousins would bring back when they used to come back from Jamaica and stuff. And then from there, obviously, as you get older, you start to explore, you start to identify new things that you like. But um, yeah, that, that gave me like a base to kind of like say, okay, this is what I like. And these are the kind of sounds that I'm, I'm into. I don't know how my mum ended up taking me to the scene. My mum and my uncle took me to Stratford Circus one day. I was thinking I must have been about 10. And um, I can't remember who was playing there, but it was like, um, it was this event. And I remember this DJ, he was playing like hip hop. And this is like early, 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 early. I don't even think it was called Grime yet. It was like just coming out of Garage. And I remember like this, I don't even think I was supposed to be in the venue, bro. Like I was like the youngest there and there was a mad mosh pit, but I was like bang, like yeah. in it, just watching things going on. And I think I was very fascinated by what I saw and the music that they were playing, like again, like he used to listen to a lot of Garage, and then that kind of just, it grew from there. And then I remember one day being at my cousin's house, um, I think at this time, definitely like with the influence of like early cable TV, the box, MTV bass, people like So Solid, Oxide and Neutrino, um, More Fire Crew, and I remember being at my cousin's house once and I was running up the stairs. I was going upstairs in his house and I don't know why, I just started freestyling and he kind of heard me, but he was like my older, older cousin. Yeah, yeah. So he must have been about 17, 18 at the time. And he heard me and he was like, come here. I was like, what's going on? He's like, say that again. I was like, what? He's like, spit that lyric again. So you know your older cousin kind of sticks it on yeah, you. you see? So I spat it again and he's like, sick, you're in my crew. And I was like, okay, I don't know what this means. I know, because they used to go to a radio station called Mystic FM. He was in a... I think it was called Two Deep Squad or something like that. He never brought me, yeah. but from there, I think I just started to like write. And then I think the, the first time I really started to sit down and actually write and not just like make things up. I remember, um, so I moved maybe the year 2000, 2001. Yeah. And the first, I never had like, before I even had a TV in my room, because I moved out of a big family house. Yeah. And then like, it was the first time of me having my own space. And, um, before I even had a TV, I had a radio set. So I would just scan through the radio, see what stations I could find. But I didn't know what they were. And I just happened to land on one, which I didn't know was actually down the road. It was Deja Vu. And I just kind of left it there. They were playing things that I liked. So they played, on a Saturday, they would play some reggae, R&B, a little bit of jungle, which I was also into. And then, um, yeah, I just kind of left it there because it was like, I knew if I left the dial on this station, I would hear something that I liked and then I just started to sit in my room and write. What are your tactics, make man agree? Don't try to ask if you ain't got bars. I only give them out to heavy MCs, not any MC. Yes, EP blew up the roads. Yes, don't think because I went goes for a minute that I ain't done that I'm on a low. Yes, I remix my own flow. In terms of like the people I grew up with, that I grew up around, obviously you make friends in the local area, you see things, you experience things together and then like, as you get older, you become more aware of what's going on in the area, not just like, on the road, but as in like politically, yeah. socially as well, like the gentrification that takes place. So that's a big part of my music as well. Yeah. The MC that made me pick up a pen was Kano. So like listening to his early stuff, then listening to all the, the radio sets on Rinse. He said everyone, Tinchi, Wiley, then the, there was the era of Skepta, like 2004. Like all those guys like definitely made me wanna keep writing, just listening to the rhyme schemes, the way they will put things together, the stories that they were telling. And this, and don't forget, this is a time where before we had Channel U, we didn't know what MCs looked like. Yeah, yeah. So you're forced to kind of imagine more 
what they look like, what these people are going through. So, um, yeah, it definitely inspired me to just, like, write and right. learn how to tell stories. Going to radio built a lot of confidence for me. Yeah. Like, when I kept going and I kept, like, realising that every week I'm getting better, yeah. I'm getting better, okay, like, let me try this lyric. This lyric is sick, that lyric don't work. So it was more like an, an experimental space that kind of just allowed me to develop my craft. But I think, for me, that was one of the most funnest, like, Experience. experiences like that was a very fun part of my career not to say it's not fun now but now it's a lot more considered like that was the part where you're just you're just trying things and seeing what works and what doesn't work just put things out man just just create work and put it into the world don't try not to think about who's going to like it and who's not going to like it someone's always not going to like it for every one person that doesn't like it there'll be a person that likes it do you know what i mean so just keep putting things out into the world and it, things will happen it's just like trial and error trial and error just keep going don't give up Three, three, two, one, action. Last time we spoke, I was talking about the, the album being like a collection of like lessons and thoughts and ideas that I learned throughout lockdown. And I think one of the main ones was that life is not like a straight journey. Like it, it's not like a straight linear journey. So you need the highs to appreciate the lows and vice versa. And I thought, oh sick, this is like pink lemonade because it's bittersweet. Like, it's, it's a bit of both, so you need to appreciate the highs and the lows, so the title just made sense. For all the times I fucked up, thought that I knew best I was this young, lived and learnt when it's said and it's done. For all the stupid things that I said, them times there I was getting on dread, but when I think back, I was mad in my head. i got a couple favourites, man. Like, it changes every time I listen to it. I think at the moment, Forgive Me is definitely, like, my top three. Um, for real. Definitely in my top three, and Rebellious as well. Rebellious is probably in there as well. Word that I say too tough, but I know sometimes I do too much. Them times there I never gave two fucks. I want him to pick up the main message I'm telling, but do you know what's sick as well? Like, someone else might listen to it and see it in a whole different way, but I want those ideas to be fed back. Like, like I, everything to me should be open source. You know what I mean? Um, I feel like I might even give out acapellas to see what people do with it and just like recreate it in their own way. Do you know what I mean? Do you know what? That song, yeah, is about um, the perception that people can have of you, especially if you work in the creative industry and like you're perceived to be someone, like people can treat you differently in a positive and a negative way. And um, that song kind of just deals with like the, the outcomes of that. And I called it Laugh Last because it's like, sometimes people might look at you and think you don't benefit them because you're not successful. And I'm not saying like, don't be useful because if you're not useful, you're useless. Do you get what I'm saying? But at the same time, sometimes people might look down on you, laugh at you. But in the end, if you stick to what you're doing and you keep going where you're going, you're going to have the last laugh. So that's why I titled it that. I'm addressing gentrification in the area where I grew up. But in general, man, like, that tune for me is like talking about being suppressed for so long and not expecting anybody to have a reaction to being suppressed and oppressed. It's like, I feel like us as a people, we have a rebellious spirit naturally. Do you get what I mean? Like, so of course, when you play with fire, you're gonna get burnt. So people do things to inflame situations, especially when you're talking like racially and socially, economically, politically, you have all these factors that play a part. And then when things like the 2011 riots happen, everyone's like, oh, like, why did this happen? Like, what's going on? When actually there was a whole series of things that you did, like you was poking the bear for ages. So this is, this is what happens. But it's also like a celebration of like, when I say me and my people are dangerous, I mean like, rah, like we have power, do you get what I'm saying? So like, as well as these things that are going on, we're still here, we're still standing, we're still striving. Taking the lessons, obviously there's loads of different subjects on there, but I think the main thing is, um, one, it's never too late to start something, like, and it's cool to make mistakes and to start again. I think those are the main two things, but I think, above all, keep going, like, don't stop. Yo. Um, 
a lot of things I've realised it's not personal. Like, I think if you take it personally, then that's when it begins to get mad in terms of like dealing with things. Like, everybody has their own stuff going on, and that's important to remember. Like, the world does not revolve around you all the time. 